What's up everyone? It's Dark Kitty here, and today I will be reading chapter 10 of the Crash Bandicoot fanfiction that I wrote, called The Joys of Being Evil. Anyways, like I said in the last video, this this chapter is going to be like really interesting, so I hope you all enjoy and let's get started with chapter 10. 20 minutes had passed and Beatrix and Mrs. Oxide were still in the bleachers talking to each other. So, said Mrs. Oxide, you said that I look familiar to you. Why do you think that is? Well, said Beatrix, thinking thoughtfully, you look exactly like my aunt. I don't really call her aunt, though. I still have to get used to that. Anyways, she said she had a twin sister, but she was killed by my father when I was born. You wouldn't be her. I highly doubt that, since she was killed and all. I doubt that as well. Why on earth would I be your mother? Heck, I... I, you don't even look like me, uh, no offense, none taken. So anyway, what if you are my mom? My uncle always told me never to give my hopes up after all. Who is your uncle? I know I'm asking too many questions, but no, it's okay. Truly it is. My uncle is Nitrous Oxide, the second fastest racer in the galaxy, my dad being the first. I call him Uncle Oxide because, of course, he is my uncle. Others call him Inoxide for short. Mrs. Oxide's ears perked up. She was m remembering who the green alien was. I know who that is, she shouted so lo loud that the other students heard her. They all looked towards her, wondering what she was shouting about. You do? asked Beatrix. But how is that possible? He's never mentioned you before. Besides, I have never seen you in my en entire life until now. How could you possibly know my uncle? I used to be part of his team until I joined Team Velo, said the coach. He forced me to race for him on, on Kobold, which is his planet. He's the emperor there. I'm not even sure how I remember this. I know he's, he's the emperor of Kobold because he is my father. Mrs. Oxide was shocked by what she had just heard. How could this girl she was talking to be the emp emperor's daughter? Why would she be on Earth if she were? Mrs. Oxide started to sweat as those questions swam through her mind. Y you're the Emperor's d daughter? Mrs. Oxide asked, having some trouble getting the words out. That's right, said Beatrix, said surprised. Yes, I am surprised indeed. Mrs. Oxide was about to say something she shouldn't have, but she had to tell Beatrix, Beatrix since she was Emperor's daughter and all. Fifteen years ago, your father said he needed someone to be the heir to his throne. I was kind of scared, to be honest, but I agreed until we had a child ten months after that. I haven't seen her ever since. What happened to her? She stayed on that planet while I came down here. Everyone thought your father had killed me, but they were wrong. I had escaped after I had you and came down here, to this godforsaken planet. To tell the truth, I like it here better than up there. I joined that team against my own will anyway, so what does it matter? That was when Beatrix decided to ask something she also shouldn't have. You want to hear something funny? My uncle told me the exact same thing about my mom. He said my father killed her after I was born. My father didn't really like her. He just wanted someone to be the heir to his throne. Do you know what th this means, Mrs. Oxide? What? You might be my mom. After all, we do have the same last name, and your backstory is the same as what my uncle told me my mom's is. So that might be a possibility, but I still don't know for sure. You think a DNA test will work? They always do. Hey, I know what. Come see me after school. I'll, I'll be in the nurse's office. You can come then. But I'll miss the bus. Didn't anyone tell you? You don't go back home until the end of the school year. You have dorm rooms that you will stay in. Come see me this afternoon instead. I'll inform the principal about this so you won't have to worry about a thing. Okay, but staying here at this academy until the end of the year sounds stupid. I agree, but rules are rules. Hey, I'm not the principal. I don't come up with the rules. The toddy bell rang right then, and all the students ran out of the gym to go to lunch. Lunch was before 4th and 5th period, apparently. Beatrix figured that out when she saw everyone heading for the cafeteria. They had the choice of sitting outside at the tables to eat instead. So that was where Beatrix went after she got her tray. Beatrix was sitting by herself until Natalie and Nina sat down by her. Discord was also sitting at the table. He still could not believe he was friends with the Emperor's daughter. Who would have imagined it, he thought. 
So how has your day been, Beatrix? Discord asked. Beatrix looked up from her food. She get, grabbed the apple out of her mouth that she was munching on. Good, she said, which was a lie. Her day had not begun at all. She had also gotten into, into trouble, but she had possibly met her mom. That was the good part. Well, that's good. Discord said, My day has been good too. Becoming a friend has been the best part of my day so far. Beatrix's face turned beet red. Someone's blushing, Natalie teased. Uh, what are you talking about? asked Beatrix. My face is always red. Besides, my fur is red. But it's getting redder. Like I said, my fur is always red. You nitwit. How can it get any redder? Oh, trust me, it's possible. Whatever, you earthlings are so weird. I cannot believe I had to come down here to this stupid school. Yeah, but you'll get used to it. I've been coming to school ever since I was five, and I've always loved it. She was now whispering in Beatrix's ear. Do you like Discord? He's... He's one of my friends, so yeah, Beatrix whispered back. I mean, like like him. I have no idea what you mean, Natalie. What do you mean by like, like? I like him as a friend. Isn't that saying enough? I meant boyfriend-wise. Trust me, this guy is not boyfriend material. But boyfriend-wise, Beatrix was blushing even more. She did not want a boyfriend, not on the first day of school. I will never get a boyfriend. I am a tomboy, and I will always be a tomboy. Come on, Beatrix. Even tomboys have crushes sometimes. Trust me, I know these things. I've had some crushes before, so I should know. Whatever, just let me finish my freaking food, okay? I haven't gotten to eat since this morning, and I'm freaking starving. Lunch went by pretty quick, and so did the other classes. Beatrix did not pay attention, as usual. She tried her best to, but she would shout every now and then. She was acting hyperactive, as she always did. Both the fourth and fifth period teachers had to make her squeeze a bar just to get her to calm down. After fifth period was over, Beatrix met Mrs. Oxide at the nurse's office. The nurse, the nurse wasn't there. She was at her house. She did not like staying at the academy during the night, it seemed. Ah, you're here, Mrs. Oxide said. Sit down and let's take the, that DNA test. Have you ever used one of these devices before? Beatrix asked. In fact, I have. I used to be a nurse at the hospital on Insanity Island. That was five years ago. Now let's take, take this DNA test and see if it's compatible. Beatrix and Mrs. Oxide both sat down on the nurse's bed. It was there in case the nurse ever stayed the night there, but she never did, so she never had any use for it except for patients at the academy. Beatrix held, held still as a sharp needle-like object poked her arm. At the same time, Mrs. Oxide was stabbed with another needle, which was attached to the same device. They both held still as the needles were pulled out of their arms. Mrs. Oxide looked carefully at the screen. The screen seemed a little fuzzy at first. Beatrix had also been looking at, at it, eager to know if this really was her mom. Be patient, said Mrs. Oxide. It'll work eventually. This thing is pretty old after all. You just have to bear with it. Mrs. Oxide gasped. Her expression had quickly changed to one of excitement. She jumped up and down like a little kid. She then bent down and hugged Beatrix. Great, Beatrix thought, another hug. Looks like you were right, Mrs. Oxide said with a wide grin on her face. We really are mother and daughter. Awesome, said Beatrix. Can you stop hugging me now? I do not like hugs. It's even from my mom. It still feels kind of weird. Mrs. Oxide noticed that she was still hugging Beatrix and pulled away quickly. Guess you can call me mom now, huh? In case you were wondering, my first name is Roberta. Oh, I know. My uncle has told me all about you. I thought you were killed by my father. I told you that I escaped. The reason for that was because I did not want to be on that planet any longer. It was slowly messing with my mind, especially after I had you. Um, no offense or anything. None taken. Again. Why would my uncle and the others tell me you were killed? You see, they have been ly lying to you this whole time. They did not think you would ever see me again, and so they told you lies to make you think so. I'm pretty mad at Oxide for that, but that's in the past. I still can't believe you're my mom. Beat Beatrix suddenly got lightheaded. She felt as if she was going to throw up. I, I need to throw up. She threw up in the trash can on the other side of the room. 
Beatrix went over to hug her mother. She usually never hugged anyone because she didn't like them, but now was the time to do so. She was so happy that she had a mom. Now nothing could go wrong, or could it? Anyways, that's chapter 10. I hope you all enjoyed. Man, it took a while for me to write the chapter a little bit because, you know, I wasn't going to put Beatrix's mom in here, but then I decided to. So, yeah, plans changed on that. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed this chapter. Can't wait to write ch to read chapter 11. Please like and subscribe.